is defined as the capacity of the body to resist pathogenic agents. It is the ability of the body to resist the entry of different types of foreign bodies like bacteria, virus and toxic substances. Immunity is of two types. We have the innate immunity and we have the acquired immunity. The acquired immunity is also known as adaptive immunity. By chance, if the organisms enter the body, innate immunity eliminates them before the development of any disease. It is otherwise called the natural or non-specific immunity. This type of immunity represents the first line of defense against any type of pathogens. Therefore, it is also called the non-specific immunity. Now, in the gastrointestinal tract, enzymes in digestive juices and the acid in stomach actually destroy the toxic substances or the organisms entering digestive tract through the food we eat. Lysozymes present in saliva also destroy bacteria. Now, different scenes and catalysts in the epithelial cells of air passage are antimicrobial peptides. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, macrophages and natural killer cells present in the lungs actually act against bacteria and viruses. In the urogenital system, the acidity in urine and vaginal fluid destroy bacteria. In the skin, the keratinized stratum conium of the epidermis protects the skin against toxic chemicals. The beta deficiency in skin are antimicrobial peptides and the lysozyme secreted in skin actually destroy bacteria. Phagocytic cells like neutrophils, monocytes and macrophages ingest and destroy microorganisms and foreign bodies by phagocytosis. Interferons actually inhibit the multiplication of viruses, parasites and cancer cells. Complement proteins actually accelerate the destruction of microorganisms. Now, acquired immunity is the resistance developed in the body against any specific foreign body like bacteria, viruses, toxins, vaccines, or transplanted tissues. So this type of immunity is also known as specific immunity. It is the most powerful immune mechanism that protects the body from the invading organisms or toxic substances. Lymphocytes are responsible for acquired immunity. Acquired immunity is of two types. We have the cellular immunity, and then we also have the humoral immunity. The lymphocytes are responsible for the development of these two types of immunity. Now, let's talk about the development and processing of lymphocytes. In fetus, lymphocytes develop from the bone marrow. Now, all lymphocytes are released in the circulation and are differentiated into two categories. The two categories are the T lymphocytes or the T cells, which are responsible for the development of cellular immunity. Number two is the B lymphocytes or the B cells, which are responsible for humoral immunity. The T lymphocytes are processed in the thymus. The processing actually occurs mostly during the period between just before birth and few months after birth. The thymus secretes a hormone called thymosine, which plays an important role in immunity. It actually accelerates the proliferation and activation of lymphocytes in the thymus. It also increases the activity of lymphocytes in lymphoid tissues. Now, during the processing of T lymphocytes, the T lymphocytes are transformed into four types. Number one, are the helper T cells or the inducer T cells. These cells are also called the CD4 cells. They are called the CD4 cells because of molecules called CD4 on their surface. Number two is the cytotoxic T cells or the killer T cells. These cells are also called CD8 cells. They are called CD8 cells because of the presence of the molecules called CD8 on their surface. Number three are the suppressor T cells. And number four, are the memory T cells. Now after the transformation, all the types of T lymphocytes leave the thymus 
and are stored in the lymphoid tissues of the lymph nodes, the spleen, bone marrow, and the gastrointestinal tract. Now for the B lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes were first discovered in the bottom of fibrations in birds. Hence, they are called B lymphocytes. Bursa fibrations is a lymphoid organ that is situated near the cloak of birds. Bursa is actually absent in mammals, and the processing of B lymphocytes takes place in the liver during fetal life and in the bone marrow after birth. Now, after processing, the B lymphocytes are transformed into two types. Number one are the plasma cells and number two are the memory cells. Now after transformation, the B lymphocytes are stored in the lymphoid tissues of lymph nodes, the spleen, bone marrow, and the gastrointestinal tract. Now let's talk about antigens. Antigens are the substances which actually induce specific immune reactions in the body. We usually have two types of antigens. Number one are the autoantigens or self-antigens that are present on the body's own cells, such as the A antigen and the B antigen in the red blood cells. Number two are the foreign antigens or what we call the non-self-antigens that enter the body from the external environment. Now let's talk about the non-self-antigens. The following are the non-self-antigens. Number one are the receptors on the cell membrane of microbial organisms such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Number two are the toxins from microbial organisms. Number three are materials from transplanted organs or incompatible blood cells. Number four are allergens or allergic substances like pulling greens. Now, let's talk about the types of non-self antigens. Non-self antigens are classified into two types. Now, depending upon the response developed against them in the body, are antigens which induce the development of immunity or production of antibodies. And number two, are antigens which react to specific antibodies and produce allergic reactions. Now, let's talk about the development of cell-mediated immunity. Cell-mediated immunity is actually defined as the immunity developed by cell-mediated response. It's also called the cellular immunity or the T-cell immunity. It involves several types of cells such as T-lymphocytes, macrophages, and the natural killer cells. And that is why it is called the cell-mediated immunity. Cell-mediated immunity does not involve antibodies. Cell-mediated immunity is the major defense mechanism against infections by viruses, fungi, and few bacteria. It is also responsible for delayed allergic reactions and the rejection of transplanted tissues. Cell-mediated immunity is offered by T lymphocytes and it starts developing when T cells come in contact with the antigens. Usually, the invading microbial or non-microbial organisms carry the antigenic materials. These antigenic materials are released from invading organisms and are presented to the helper T cells by antigen presenting cells. The antigen presenting cells are a special type of cells in the body which induce the release of antigenic materials from invading organisms and later present these materials to the helper T cells. Antigen presenting cells are of three types. Number one are macrophages, number two are dendritic cells, number three are the B lymphocytes. Now, among these cells, macrophages are the major antigen presenting cells. Now, macrophages are the large phagocytic cells which digest the invading organisms to release the antigen. The macrophages are present along with lymphocytes in almost all the lymphoid tissues. Now, the dendritic cells are non phagocytic in nature. Now, based on their location, dendritic cells are classified into three types. Number one, we have dendritic cells of spleen, which trap the antigens in the blood. We have follicular dendritic cells in lymphoid tissues, which trap the antigen in the lymph. Number three, we have the larger hands dendritic cells in skin, which trap the organisms coming in contact with the body surface. It, recently, it is found that B lymphocytes also act as antigen-presenting cells. 
Thus, the B cells function as both antigen presenting cells and antigen receiving cells. However, B cells are the least efficient antigen presenting cells and need to be activated by helper T cells. Now, invading foreign organisms are either engulfed by macrophages through phagocytosis or trapped by dendritic cells. Later, the antigen from these organisms is digested into small peptide products. These antigenic peptide products move towards the surface of the antigen presenting cells and bind with the human leukocyte antigen. The human leukocyte antigen is a genetic matter that is present in the molecule of class 2 major histocompatibility complex, which is situated on the surface of the antigen presenting cells. The B cells ingest the foreign bodies by means of pinocytosis. The role of B cells as antigen presenting cells in the body is not fully understood. The major histocompatibility complex is a large molecule present in the short arm of chromosome 6. It is made up of a group of genes which are involved in the immune system. It has more than 200 genes, including the human leukocyte antigens genes. The human leukocyte antigen is made up of genes with small molecules. It encodes antigen presenting proteins on the cell surface. Particularly in humans, the major histocompatibility complex molecules are often referred to as human leukocyte antigen molecules. The major histocompatibility molecules in human beings are divided into two types. We have the class 1 major histocompatibility complex molecules. It is found on every cell in the human body. It is specifically responsible for presentation of endogenous antigens to cytotoxic T cells. Number 2 are the class 2 major histocompatibility complex molecules. It is found on B cells, macrophages and other antigen presenting cells. It is responsible for presenting the exogenous antigens to help T cells. Now, antigen presenting cells present their class 2 major histocompatibility complex molecules together with antigen bound human leukocyte antigen to the helper T cells. This activates the helper T cells through a series of events. Number one is that the helper T cells recognizes the antigen displayed on the surface of the antigen presenting cell with the help of its own surface receptor protein called the T cell receptor. Recognition of the antigen by the helper T cell initiates a complex interaction between the helper T cell receptor and the antigen. This reaction activates the helper T cells. At the same time, macrophages release interleukin 1, which facilitates the activation and proliferation of helper T cells. The activated helper T cells proliferate, and the proliferated cells enter the circulation for further action. Simultaneously, the antigen, which is bound to class 2 major histocompatibility complex molecules, activate the B cells also, resulting in the development of humoral immunity. Now the helper T cells which enter the circulation activate all the other T cells and B cells. The helper T cells are of two types. Number one is the helper 1 cell. Number two is the helper 2 cells. Helper 1 cells are also known as TH1 cells. The helper 2 cells are also known as TH2 cells. The helper 1 cells are concerned with cellular immunity and secret two substances. Number one is interleukin 2, which activates the other T cells. Number two is gamma interferon, which stimulates the phagocytic activity of cytotoxic cells, macrophages, and natural killer cells. Now, the helper 2 cells are concerned with humoral immunity and secrete interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 which are concerned with the activation of B cells, proliferation of plasma cells, and the production of antibodies by plasma cell. These cytotoxic T cells that are activated by helper T cells circulate through blood, the lymph, and the lymphatic tissues and destroy the invading organisms by attacking them directly. The receptor situated on the outer membrane of cytotoxic T cells binds the antigen organisms tightly with the cytotoxic T cells. Then the cytotoxic T cells enlarge and release cytotoxic substances like the lysosomal enzymes. 
These substances destroy the vagal organisms. Like this, each cytotoxic T cells can destroy a large number of microorganisms one after the other. Cytotoxic T cells also destroy cancer cells and transplanted cells. They also destroy even the body's own tissues which are affected by foreign bodies, particularly the viruses. Now, suppressor T cells are also called regulatory T cells. These T cells suppress the activities of the killer T cells. Thus, the suppressor T cells play an important role in preventing the killer, the killer T cells from destroying the body's own tissues along with invaded organisms. Suppressor cells suppress the activities of helper T cells also. Some of the T cells activated by antigen do not enter the circulation but remain in the lymphoid tissue. These T cells are called the memory T cells. In later periods, the memory cells migrate to various lymphoid tissues throughout the body. When the body is exposed to the same organism for the second time, the memory cells identify the organism and immediately activate the other T cells. So the invading organism is destroyed very quickly. The response of the T cells is also more powerful to this time. Each T cell is designed to be activated only by one type of antigen. It is capable of developing immunity against that antigen only. This property is called the specificity of T cells. Now let's talk about the development of humoral immunity. The humoral immunity is defined as the immunity mediated by antibodies which are secreted by B lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes secrete the antibodies into the blood and live. The blood and live are the body fluid which are called humors. Since the B lymphocytes provide immunity through humors, this type of immunity is called the humoral immunity or the B cell immunity. Now, antibodies are the gamma globulins produced by B lymphocytes. 